Hi, and welcome to this Real Python course on Django Setup. In this short course, I'm going to walk you through all the necessary steps that you need to do every time before starting a new Django project. You will learn about preparing your environment, which means setting up a virtual environment and activating it, then installing Django and pinning your dependencies. Finally, setting up a Django project. So this is the first time you're actually going to do something with Django. And we're going to talk a little bit about the difference between a Django project and a Django app. After having a Django project, you're going to start a Django app. And at this point, you're essentially done. And this is what you will do every time before starting to work on an individual Django project. And to sum up this course, in the final lesson, I'm going to walk you over a command reference where we just go over all the bash commands, all the terminal commands that you used in order to get to this point so that you have a quick overview of the necessary steps for this. And that's all. In the next lesson, you're going to get started with preparing your environment. See you there. In this lesson, you will prepare your environment to get it ready for building your Django project. And essentially, there are two things that you need to do to prepare your environment. First, you need to set up a virtual environment. And second, you need to also activate that virtual environment. And once you've done these two steps, then whoosh, you're inside of a safe place where you can start installing dependencies, install your Django version, and then start working on your Django project. Now, the command for setting up a virtual environment is on a Unix system, it's going to be Python 3-M VNV and then the path to your folder that you want to create. So this is going to be a little bit different if you're on a Windows machine. Make sure to check the description. But essentially, the command is going to be the same. Just you need to define the path in a slightly different way. And this part on the right side, so after Python 3-M VNV, this is going to be the path and name to the virtual environment that you want to create. So in this case, I'm creating in the current folder, I'm creating a new folder called .vnv that's going to be the virtual environment. Now, let's head over to VS Code and just I'm going to show you how to create this. So here I'm inside of a folder just called Django Setup. That sits in my documents. And right in here, I will create this virtual environment by typing the command that you just saw. So I'm saying Python 3-M VNV. And again, remember, I am doing this on a Mac. So that's a Unix system. So if you're working on Windows, it will be a little bit different. But here I can say, stay in the current folder and then create a new folder called .VNV that will be the virtual environment. So once I press Enter here, got to wait a little bit. And then you see that this .VNV folder here got created. That means that I created successfully created a virtual environment. Now, that doesn't mean you should start installing Django right away, because first you need to also activate that virtual environment. So the command for this is going to be, again, on a Unix system, a little different than on Windows. On Unix, you can say source and then give the path to the activate script. So that's inside of the name of the virtual environment that I created. Then the bin folder, and then there sits an activate script. I can show you this in VS Code over there, but if you're on Windows, it will be a little bit different. So you need to give the path to your virtual environment and then into a scripts folder. And then there's a file called activate.bat. So you want to execute that file instead. So let's look at this on macOS. I will show you where the file is. So inside of .vnv and then the bin folder, you can see there's an activate script. No need to understand in detail what's going on there. If you want to learn more about virtual environments, make sure to check out the course that we have on that too. So, but now I'm ready to activate it. I'm going to say source.vnv bin and then activate and I press enter. And once you see this name of your virtual environment appear here, so I can see .vnv showing up in front of my prompt. That means that I successfully activated the virtual environment and now I'm ready to start installing dependencies if I want to. So as a note, again, you always want to look for the name of your virtual environment before you prompt, just to confirm that you've actually activated it and that you know that now you're in a safe space and you can continue with the next steps. As a quick recap, 
to prepare your environment, you need to do two things. First, set up a virtual environment and then also activate that virtual environment. And if this whole concept of virtual environments is a little blurry to you still, then make sure to check out the dedicated tutorial and course that we have on this. All right, next up, you can get ready to install Django and pin your dependencies. In this lesson, you will learn how to install Django and also how to pin your dependencies and work with them. So this topic, installing Django and pinning your dependency, has primarily two points to it, as you might expect. First, it's installing Django, and second, it's pinning your dependencies. But there's also something else I'm going to talk about, which is what do you do with pinned dependencies? So there will be a third topic, which is how do you install your pinned dependencies if you think about it from the opposite end, that you maybe receive a Django project with a requirements file that you will get to know in just a second, and then how do you install from there? So it's Either when you're starting from scratch, it's going to be mostly installing Django and pinning your dependencies. But if you work on an existing project, then you might want to install pinned dependencies. So let's take a look at that and let's start by installing Django. The command for this is python3-m pip, so using the pip module to install Django. And I will head over to VS Code and do that right away. Over here, you see my virtual environment is activated, and I can now go and say python3, not python2, dash m pip install Django. When I execute this command, then pip makes a connection to PyPI, fetches the Django package, and installs it into the virtual environment. That's why it's important that you have that activated, because otherwise it goes into your system install of Python, which you don't want. Now, I'm not going to make you wait for this, so let's skip through the time of install. And we're done. So Django is installed. Using this command, python3-m pip install Django. That's really all you need to do. And one thing to remember though is that if you do this, then it installs the most recent version of Django. Now you might wonder, okay, so what if you want a specific version of Django, maybe an older one, what do you do? And you can do that as well. If you want to install a specific Django version, then you use the exact same command, but you add something at the end, which is you define the version that you want to use. So a double equal sign and then a version number is going to make pip install that specific version of Django. So this command would install the version 2.2.11 of Django. Now, in the next lesson, you're going to learn about how to pin your dependencies, because in this case, you would have a dependency of a specific Django version. So you want to make sure that this is also noted somewhere in your project, that if someone else uses your project, they know that they should work with Django 2.2.11 instead of the newest version. And to note this, yeah, you need to pin your dependencies. And in the next lesson, you will learn how to do that. After successfully installing the most recent version of Django in the previous lesson, you will now learn how to pin your dependencies to make sure that anyone using your project in the future knows what version of Django you were working with. And the command for doing this is python3-m pip and then the freeze command and then you're piping the output of this command into a new file called requirements.txt. And this is just the name of a file, but it is a standard naming for a place where you want to keep track of your requirements for a Python project. All right, let's do this. Over here, you see all the mess from installing Django. So I will clear that up and now run the command python3 m pip freeze. And before I'm actually piping it into the requirements file, let's just see what the output of this is. If I run this command, it's going to tell me which are the packages that are currently installed. You can see that Django equals equals 3.2.2 is the current version of Django at the time of recording this video. So I only explicitly installed Django and I didn't even specify a version. I just said, give me the most recent one. And it also installed some other dependencies that Django has. So Django always like it needs these other packages. So if you go and install Django, then they also come with it. Now. I want to make sure that someone else using this package is also going to know that it was built with Django 3.2.2. So I need to put the output of this freeze command somewhere. So I can type python3-m pip freeze. And then instead of just 
showing the output here in the console, I'm going to pipe it into a file. So I'm going to say pipe it into requirements.txt. And it will pop up here, the file, once I execute this command. Here it is. You see you have a new file called requirements.txt. And this file has exactly the same content as what you saw before. It just pins, it just notes what are the dependencies necessary for running this project. Cool. So now you can commit this to version control together with the rest of your project files. And anyone who wants to work with your project can just go ahead and install the necessary requirements by reading them from the requirements file. Now, how to do that, you're going to learn about in the next lesson. In the previous lesson, you learned how to pin your dependencies with this command and also why you would want to do it in order to keep track of the specific versions that you're using. And in this lesson, you're going to learn how to install your pinned dependencies. Now, the command for this is python3-m pip install. So similar to installing Django, but then instead of specifying the name Django here, you're going to say read from the requirements.txt file. So dash r and then pass the name of the file, which is by default is going to be requirements.txt. In order to actually show you how this happens, I'm going to go over here and delete the virtual environment that I have so far, just as a little practice to redo everything and kind of like simulate how it would be like if you download the project and all you have is this requirements.txt file. So let me deactivate the, deactivate the virtual environment. You see, this is gone. The prepended thing is gone. So now it's deactivated and now it will remove the folder. And here you can see that that's the useful thing about using virtual environment that once I delete this, anything that was installed in there is gone and it didn't pollute my system anywhere else. So I go ahead and recreate a new virtual environment with the same command dot VNV. We'll see it pop up again. Then you also need to activate it once it's finished. Bin and activate. Again, now you're inside of the virtual environment, but nothing is installed so far. So if I say Python 3-m pip freeze, you remember before it showed the different packages that came with Django, including Django. And now I don't get any output because there's nothing installed yet. So now I want to install because I made this nice file requirements to txt that comes with the software empty project. I want to install any package that's noted in here. And as we said before, let's double check on the command. The command is python 3 m pip install dash r for read requirements.txt. So I'm going to do this over here now. Python 3-m pip install read the requirements.txt file. So I'm using autocomplete here with the tab character to make it a little easier. And now it's reading, you can see like it's installing sgref Django of that specific version, just as it's noted inside of the requirements.txt file. All right, so once this install is finished, I'm going to have the same environment as I had before, the one that I froze with the command. And this is why it's helpful to pin your dependencies and also how to install it from pin dependencies. So in these last two lessons, you learned how to install Django and pin your dependencies. First, you did the command to install Django. Then you pinned your dependencies and then we took this little detour to also learn how to install from pinned dependencies. And next up, in the next lesson, you will learn to finally set up a Django project. In this lesson, you will finally start working with the Django package that you installed in the previous lesson and you will use it to set up a Django project. Before you do that practically, let's take a little detour and just talk about the difference between Django projects and Django apps. Because these are two specific terms that have a meaning for Django and it's good to have an overview understanding of what each of them are. So 
a Django project is a larger scale structure. So a Django project can contain multiple apps. And generally, when you set up a Django project, you get this larger level structure plus a management app. The management app is a Django app, but it is a special one in that case. So any other app that you will set up following this one is going to be a bit different, but they're going to be same to each other. But what you're going to do in this lesson is set up a Django project, which means this larger level structure plus the management app. And the command for doing this is Django-admin, start project, and then you give it a name, the name that you want your project to have. For this example, I will call the project setup. So my command will be Django-admin start project setup. So let's head over to VS Code and do that practically and see what happens. Over here with my activated virtual environment, I'm ready to start a Django project by typing Django-admin start project and then give it a name. And I said it's going to be set up for here. So once I tap this, I can press enter and let Django do its thing. It's already done. You can see a new folder pop up here in the folder structure. And this is the project folder. So you can think of it as the black square. And it contains a couple of things. It contains another folder of the same name and then a file called manage.py. Let's look at this in the schema, what happened here. So running the command Django-admin start project setup gave us like this structure here. So that was the folder that it was in when running the command. And it created a folder called setup with some, some other stuff in there. And let's actually walk over the most important things step by step. But keep in mind that what you created here now is this black square with the management app inside of it. So setup is the black square and the nested setup is the red management app. And just to drive the point home, let's look at this step by step. So you're inside of the current folder, you run the command, you get one folder in there called setup. This is your project folder for your Django project. And it then contains another folder of the same name. In this case, it's called setup because that's the project name you gave. So setup slash setup, it's down here. This is your management app for your Django project. And it contains a couple of files that you can check out and then finally it also contains a python file called manage.py which is the command center of your app and you will use this file quite often when you interact on a project level for example when you do some tasks involving the database or if you want to create a super user then this is where the commands for this live and this is part of your django project all right so you might wonder, why do you have this double? Like, why do you have setup and then another setup in here? And isn't that kind of like superfluous? And there are ways of skipping one level of these directories by just essentially declaring the current folder that you're in as your Django project folder. And in the next lesson, I will show you how to do that.